Hello and welcome to the fourth episode of Payara Podcast. My name is Dominika Tasarsuchacka and I will be your host for this episode. Today I would like to invite you to listen to the conversation I had with Otavio Santana. Otavio is a passionate architect and software engineer and a very prominent persona in the Java E and Jakarta community. He is a Java champion, recognized for his vast contributions to the Java and open source ecosystem. He is a committer and leader in several open source products and specifications. Over the years, Otavio contributed to many open source Java projects and shared huge amounts of knowledge and experience with his fellow developers and engineers. I've had a pleasure to work with Otavio on a few different projects including Payara Hackathon and our ongoing work on the Jakarta e Marketing Committee. This time, I invited him to the Payara podcast so we could talk about how you can kickstart the journey into software engineering, career paths and opportunities in the Java and Jakarta e industry, and how you can start contributing to open source and generally getting more involved in the Java community. We talked a lot about self-improvement, getting out of your comfort zone, personal growth, long-term investments, and seeing a bigger picture. If you want to know exactly what we mean by it, stay with us and listen to this episode of Payara Podcast with Otavio Santana. Let's write history with code. Hi, Otavio. It's very uh, good to have you here. How are you today? Oh, hello, Dominica. It's fine. Super happy to be here. And please invite me every time. As I usually say, Payara is my Brazilian favorite fish so uh, i'm true. always happy to be around <laughs> yeah that's true that's true i always forget it's it's yeah that's it it's native uh yeah to brazil as well and i, I do tell that story so a lot of people ask what is payara as what is the fish and then i go through the story and then i remember ah oh, yeah actually it is it is from from brazil uh, so yeah that's uh, that's our our connection there but no it's great to have you and i'm sure i'm sure there's so many topics we can talk about and uh, i could come up with a hundred of questions for you um but today i wanted to focus on maybe just uh, one area one of many areas we can we can discuss uh but because you have um such a great experience you know in working in the java industry in uh in general in in engineering um software engineering but also contributions to open source uh, consultancy, all of it, you know, everything that sort of I've been uh, looking at for, for the last 12, 13 years of being in this industry, I've seen you and I think you are a great person to, um, you know, maybe help those people who are only starting in the industry or maybe are uh, wanting to develop their career a bit further, maybe take it uh, somewhere, you know, a different direction. Um, I think you have a lot of experience, a lot of stories that you can share to maybe help those people uh, that only are starting or, or changing their career in this in this world, in this Java uh, Java world, where they can take it, how they can approach it. I think that's uh, that would be great uh, to talk about uh, today with you. Oh, glad. nice! I'm glad to be here, share knowledge, ideas, and of course, uh, contribute yeah. to the community, right? Yeah, exactly. So, um, because yeah, we we are together on the um, uh, even yeah, you even get involved in like marketing um, side of of things. So it's not just engineering because we are together on the uh, marketing committee for Jakarta EE. So there's lots of things that that you're doing. So um, yeah, it's really great to see, and I think there's there's lots of things we can uh, we can share with others to to help them because we do need. Um, more people with yes. that type of enthusiasm that type of uh, you know approach and just the uh, general it's not just about the skills but it's about i guess knowing where to go how to approach things and and where to start to gain confidence because i think a lot of people don't get involved or or maybe don't move up in in their career whichever route they take because maybe there's lack of confidence or lack of uh, understanding where to go how to start uh, which direction to to turn? So uh, yeah, I think hopefully we can talk about it a little bit more today. So um, I think like how would you describe your role right now? What what do you do these days? Okay, I I, I don't know if you know me. Of course you know, but if you are listening to, uh, you probably check my LinkedIn and I love history and philosophy. Uh, how I describe myself? I I like to think about a modern philosopher or someone who writes the history with code. I like the idea to be impactful for the whole humankind 
doing what I'm doing. So uh, I like to contribute to the, to the whole society with open source, impact what I'm doing, impact somebody else's life. Uh, uh, somebody tell me that the, the good way to measure the success is to check how many people you are contributing and change positively their life. And for me, that's the way, the good way to measure the success as well. So for me, it's a, I'm just a philosopher who decided to become an engineer and impact the whole humankind with code and change somebody else, hopefully everybody else, positively life. Oh, that's, that, sounds, that sounds great. And I didn't expect that answer, but no, it sounds... Um... That's it, but that's that's exactly what 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 is happening, really. Because uh, again, another thing that I I think people don't realize when they work um, in this industry is how many people your code affects, right? Because a lot yeah, of the time, exactly. is you write something in your own, you know, little office. Um, these days, probably in your own bedroom office, and you send it off, and then you forget about it, and you move on to the next thing. But actually, what you write can build something or contributes often contributes to something much much bigger that then uh, you know um, influences the whole industry especially if you for example contribute to things like java jakarta ee uh, you have direct contribution to its future and then that drives contribution of of big businesses the future of big businesses that use this technology and so on so yeah i think that's a really good way of putting it uh, um, you know it's not just piece of code or it's not just tech it's actually affecting much more than that yeah that's my, that may, my remaining reason to wake up all the morning so every day so i need to impact the future somehow and need to impact the humankind somehow and the open source is one way to do it so i increase my career i increase my networking I, and I pack the whole society doing this kind of thing. So that's why I like this approach of, okay, let's write history with codes. <laughs> mm. it's, it's the bigger picture, isn't it? It's seeing the bigger picture, not just yeah. not just your day-to-day. -day. This is this is what I did today. Um, it's actually how does that affect um, the rest and, 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 and the bigger picture. I really like that. It's a, it's a modern engineer, right? I mean, if you look to 2,000 years ago, the Roman decide to create a coliseum. And right now everybody's able to see that. I right. mean, you're able to check that, check the architecture, check uh, the piece of the, the coliseum, the monolith of the coliseum, and things like that. And right now, what are you doing? We are doing exactly something. And hopefully after, I don't know, 100, 1000 years, people come through that, of course, virtually and check, okay, you are here because somebody did that in the past. We are here because somebody did that. And it feels like that will happen more often and more often. Yeah. And 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 it's it's good to sort of again see that perspective because a lot of the time we're just too busy to to see that actually what we do has a larger effect um on on a larger society in this case, obviously, because we, we all uh here both of us and and most of our listeners uh, are working in this open source industry and and everything we do contributes back to the um to the community at large and then building all of those technologies and pushing them forward wherever they go because we don't know where they will be maybe in 20 years but uh we know we know what we're doing right now and and it's nice to have this this bigger uh picture in in mind so so that's that's a good advice already right right off the bat i think just uh think about what you're doing um from that larger perspective, not just literally your role that you have next to your name on LinkedIn profile, right? Yes, exactly. And that is the biggest mistake that we usually do as a software engineer, right? You mentioned about we work together in the marketing and sometimes we put a lot of focus on the hard skill, writing code and things like that. And we just forget what? The main reason that we're doing that is people. Uh, that's why the soft skill is super important. It's super critical. Uh, there is no way to escape people. I mean, we are doing code with people, to people, from people, and through people. And the soft skill, the communication, if you like that, is super critical for, doesn't matter any area of the tech you're going to. And when we talk about career, 
we need to understand that we need to be as we need to sell sell ourselves all the time and that is marketing right so the personal branding I mean, I need to make me more available. I need to know, to share what I know. This way people will be okay. I will talk about Java and open source. Okay, of course, I will call Domenica because I know that she knows a lot of things about that. And that's another way to use an open source to achieve that because you help people. We impact the whole society. People will see that. And sometimes you're going to help yourself with personal branding because, okay, Domenica is working in Payara. There's an open source that's related to Jakarta EE. So she's an expert on those areas. She's an expert in marketing with the technical perspective. So I will invite her to work with me or I hire her. So or I will receive some advice for her because I know what she knows. Yeah, so it's it's again, so it's your involvement and and knowing other people and networking, all of all of that really counts. And like you, yeah, I can't I can't stress that enough how important it is to to have um, or to work on those soft skills. Because again, I I completely understand not everyone um, in the you know software industry. If you are an engineer and you know you're there because you love to code and this is this is your mindset, you don't necessarily are the best person not always are the best person to you know stand in front of an audience and do a um talk at the conference with you know 700 people in the in the room although that's a big conference um but um a lot of the time those soft skills come very useful um at that much smaller scale your personal like you said bu building your personal brand and even if you don't have those skills just knowing who to talk to uh, knowing who to observe who to learn from this is this is also a skill so uh, and again it's an amazing thing in in this industry and this is why i i love working you know with open source is that um we're all in it together uh, to some extent you know we all represent our own companies our own brands um, if we you know um, if you are an independent consultant you represent yourself if you work for another company you represent that company but at the end of the day when we work together let's say on Jakarta EE uh, like in our case in my case um, we all work for that one cause and it doesn't matter that if we uh, you know if our companies are, are um, sort of um, uh, you know, creating the same technology and we compete in that space uh, for the bigger picture. We can learn from each other. We can network with each other. We can uh, we can work together. So that's that's a great thing to do. And that's why I do encourage everyone to try and, and contribute and be part of open source project, whether whatever that is for you, for us, it's 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 Jakarta EE, it's micro profile uh, for others can be can be other projects, but it still helps. And you do get to work with people from other areas and not only not necessarily just engineers and and other developers but also marketing sales um sometimes you know strategic uh, planning on uh, you know a business planning all of that is very very useful i think yes i mean that's the main reason that i enjoy a lot of open source because we are able to learn a lot of things uh for example myself i'm come from brazil i was born in brazil in a small city called salvador and Brazil is a third world country, so we're not able to have a good education over there. And we badly have lessons to Portuguese. Imagine English as a second language. So, okay, Otav, you come from a not well family. How, how do you learn in English? Open source. I was able to practice open source. At some time, I was learning English. As I was able to speak, to, to learn to speak in English, and that increased my confidence to do it at my work as well. So I was able to tell myself. I was able to talk with stakeholders. I was able to talk with my colleagues to sell my idea in a technical perspective. Uh, as, I, as we said, you agree that it's impossible to escape with people when you talk about software. The stakeholder is a people. Uh, we have people everywhere, like Java, right? Yeah. And the open source can achieve that more easily because we're able to practice. And then when you go to production, I mean, at your work, you you increase your confidence because you do that more often than we we wish. And as you mentioned, okay, open source is not only about code. 
But guess what? Soft engineering goes beyond code as well. We need to talk about business requirements. We need to talk about DDD, the domain-driven design. We also mentioned the ambiguous language. That's the language for the business perspective. So we need to interact with people. Right now, everybody has mentioned the agile methodology, where the goal is to increase interaction over, document over documentation. Um, if you want to become a staff engineer or someone who goes beyond senior and keep a technical person, you need to start to mentoring people. And it is a soft skill as well. Another point that uh, we were able to see and check about personal branding is the credibility of the person. I mean, we are in the hiring process right now. And I know that someone is committer of an open source project. And I have no idea about the second one. Who gets more chance? Mm. I mean, I will apply to Payata. And I'm super active contributor to Payata. I'm doing a lot of contributions, a lot of commits. And there is a second one who did not do anything about Payata, who has no idea about Jakarta. So who gets more chance? Right. Probably the most active one will skip the whole process of the hiring because the whole company already knows this person. That's it. Yeah, you already come in with an introduction where we're already made before, right? You, you, you already known to uh, at least part of the uh, of the company or, or a project you're applying for. That's right. So that's that's uh, in a way I think that answers my my next question because I wanted to ask you what advice would you offer to uh, either young or new developers, people who are entering this software engineering field, especially in in Java. So I guess one of the advice is to contribute to open source to to the project that yeah, you exactly. are interested in. Is there is there anything else? I mean, there's probably lots of advice you can give. Oh, of course. Yeah. Uh, the second one is understand that soft engineering goes beyond code. Please read soft skill, understand the soft skill, uh, learn in practice to do presentation more often than we wish. You will become a salesperson. You like or not, because you're gonna sell your ideas, you're gonna sell the architecture, you're gonna sell the soft design, you're gonna sell yourself to the hiring process. So. You're gonna sell yourself, you're gonna sell anything every single day. There's no way to escape. Uh, read more books is often, so have good habits to, okay, instead of try to read a book uh, the whole weekend, try to do it every single day. So take 10 minutes to read a book, 20 minutes to read a book, as much you have time to do it. But try to try to do it every single day. So have the habit to read. And understand that career is a marathon. So it's a long-term investment. So it's not, it's not something that you're going to do today to take tomorrow. It takes years. As Dominica already said, she has over 20 years of experience. So I do have also 10 years of experience. So if I only do something on my short time or short term, it's bad, right? Because the career is something that we, you grow for decades. I was still studying, I was still learning, I was still practicing, I was still invest in my personal branding company, things like that. So open source code, soft skill, and good habits to read, to study, and of course, health. Yeah, that's that's true. And the, the consistency um and yeah and i think even with with uh like reading books or whatever training people i guess decide decide to do uh taking it in small chunks right because uh, uh yeah like you said every every day just a bit every day and i think it's tough it's it's one of those things that you need it sounds obvious but we all need these things to be reminded of because we get sucked into the day to day yes. right and it's just so difficult to see outside of it um but i'm really glad that you that you keep mentioning the soft skills and the fact that we need to um remember that we also sales people and i think it comes it happens to like to everyone when you when you do work and you work on your career at some point maybe not all the time but at some point there will be 
times in your in your life where you will have to really yeah be that salesperson just for yourself just to just to promote and sell sell your skills yourself and and uh, that's true and i think i think it's i'm not i don't want to say it's easy because it's not easy but i think it's easier than people make it because quite often if someone isn't working in marketing or or, or sales then obviously it sounds like it's a you just have to be a specialist to be good at it and and i i don't think that's the case if you if you want to be in that role for you know all the time for full time then it's a different story but if it's for your own your own personal profile um there's things that you can learn things that you can observe from other people and i think Otavio, you are one of those those people that that are really good examples how to how to approach that and yeah it might mean you have to go outside of your comfort zone but again that's how we learn right Yes, the comfort zone is something that you need to forget <laughs> every single day, right? I mean, you need to try to do to do your best. I'm not talking to change every, your life, you everything in a single day, but change one person every single day. Update yourself every single day. So after one year, you're going to see how awesome you become because of that. Um, we mentioned right about the career, uh, 10 years of experience. Some people thought, okay, it's impossible to learn a new language because, I mean, there is vocabulary, there's new words. But think about long-term support. If you decide to learn a single word every single day, in a, one year, we got over 300 words. Mm. In 10 years, <laughs> over 3,000 words. So... Just one single day, just one single word every single day, step by step. So yeah, again, bigger picture. It's to make a good, yeah, yeah, exactly, a big picture, exactly. Yeah. yeah, just looking at it from a from a different perspective, and uh, yeah, so it's it's uh, it's not one off training, right? It never is. You learn all the time. That's that's the approach. yes, especially with IT, right? I mean, it's impossible to. I guess right now every area needs to learn every single day at least one thing. Mm. And also, I guess the the huge challenge is exactly like that, right? I mean, the art to say no to some things. It's impossible to become expert in everything. We need to change to choose what you want to learn. Uh, of course, check the market teach if check if it makes sense to to invest your time, especially long term. And start to say no to everything else. I mean, I do Java, I do database, but of course, I'm not able to do Kubernetes because it's a totally different area. I mean, I'm good in software engineers, software architecture, persistence layer, and so on. However, I'm awful with Kubernetes, with operation, with pipeline, tuning of pipeline, and so on. Um, if I start to learn everything, I was not able to good to be good in anything, right? Yeah. So there is an amazing book that is the Essentialist, and they mention something about that, right? I mean, instead of trying to do everything and lose energy, focus in one goal to achieve that most straight as possible, and then jump to another goal and jump to another goal and so on. Yeah, that's that's really important, and th thanks for mentioning that because. I think in this day and age, there's so much happening, and and even in our, you can you can say it's a, our industry is already narrowed down because it's quite specialized, but it's still full of, you can be specialist in so many things, you can you can uh, learn so many things, but there's only as as much as you can handle, right? And I think we're yes. bombarded by all of it. It can be very tough for someone who is still looking for their route there that is still looking for what they're good at or what they enjoy most or, or, or ideally both. Um, it's, it's, it's easy to get lost and it's easy to uh, grab, uh, you know, too many things at the same time and then drop it all. So, um, yeah, so I think it's like you said, the advice that you, you've mentioned before, the consistency, um, it applies here as well. Um, just, uh, but you do need to, I guess you do need to look for uh, things and and try different things, I guess, to to see what 
what is your thing or what will become your thing did you did you go through that sort of route at at uh, did you maybe try something else before and then realized okay that's definitely not for me oh yes i tried for example be a manager i tried to be a manager at the beginning of my career especially a long long time ago uh, the the career was back to okay you become a senior engineer and the unique path is to become a manager there's no other options right to do right now that okay you can keep as technical as a staff engineer i uh, five years ago we need to go as a manager as a mandatory uh path and then i tried to three four months and then decide okay no that's not good for me so <laughs> we have two options or oh, return to a senior engineer i am fine with that oh have a different career for me. Oh, I need to find another company. And that moment I decided to go to another company because I can handle with people. Uh, of course, as I mentioned, social um, soft skill and communication is crucial to any soft engineer. But be a manager has totally different things that you should learn in that I, I don't want to. I'm assuming fail in love with soft engineering, architecture, code design, things like that. And be a manager is around budget, projects, release, date, it's been more time in meetings and meetings and so on. So I tried that. I was not happy. And then I returned to become a soft engineer. And I also tried to go to mobile, uh, to Android. At that time, that Java was running with uh android as well but no i did not like it and they returned to the enterprise server applications with monolith microservice and so on mm. and operation was the one that i i did not try okay i know what is it i know what what sounds like but it's not my it's not my thing so let's keep it <laughs> far from me yeah. No, and, and it's, again, very important thing to mention because it doesn't mean that when you sign up to something that you sign up sign up forever. It's uh, You do have to sometimes just take a step back and, and say, okay, that's not for me. And that's uh, yes. that's completely fine. And it doesn't mean that you've lost that time. It means that you've just learned a lot about yourself and about what you do want to do. And, and quite often it's just strengthen um, this, sort of um you know thinking okay i know what i want to do or, or i i know which route i know a little bit better now which route i want to take because i definitely know i i'm not going that direction and and yeah and i noticed that as well about this this sort of career path um for for uh, especially for tech people that at some point there is that um sort of expectation uh, in some areas uh, it depends on on the company as well but in general in general yes that you become a manager as as the next step but obviously it's not for everyone and it's it's a complete change to uh, to yes. the approach and it's not and 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 I think a lot of people do find it really good and and again challenging and out of your comfort zone and then you realize actually I'm really good at it I'll, I'm going to keep at it but a lot of people at the same time are just like no, I just want to stay where I was, and and I think there's a misconception that this means you're not moving forward, which is not not true, is it? Because you can still move forward within being an engineer, right? Yes, exactly. Uh, this new career path is a staff engineer, right? Where the goal is to have more alignment with the managers, where you should impact the same size of a manager. So, okay. Of course, I won't be in several meetings like a manager. However, I need to help the manager to achieve software quality across teams. I need to help team where they have some issues with the architecture. I need to define new code design perspective. I need to put governance, what you don't have. I need to engage people to increase their career. So uh, the staff engineer, of course, need to handle with people. No often like a manager, but it's, it's crucial uh, to the colleagues. And we also need to be a technical person. So study, discuss, understanding, reading, doing open source. But at some time, we need to have discussions with other engineers, 
And also, people who is not engineer but in charge, for example, manager, director, C-level, and so on, sometimes we need to be a bridge between the C-level and the engineering team. For example, when you decide to move to Java 21, of course, if you go to the C-level and say, hey, let's move it to Java 21 because it's amazing, they have no idea what Java 21 means. So I need to take this point and change my short talent to explain, okay, if you go to this way, we will save more money. We will we'll, we'll speed up the team to deliver more, more product and so on. And of course, when you go to talk with the engineering team, I will talk about the features, visual trades, and things like that. So I have the same goal. Because I do have two different audiences, I need to change completely the storytelling. Mm -hmm. To see level is about budget, money, and results. And the, the technical perspective is more about features, uh, decrease vulnerabilities in the codes, and so on. So the same goal, different storytelling. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, and you, you've mentioned that before, you know, about uh, working for um, another, you know, working for, for different companies and, and different sort of career routes. And I know you, you've done both, uh, you know, being an employee and also being independent consultant. What what would you say are the benefits and drawbacks of each? Uh, because I guess this is another, um, another thing that people um, need to decide on in their career. Um, well, or maybe yes. they don't need to decide, like, right at the start, okay, I'm going to be an independent consultant or I'm going to be uh, looking to work for a company. What what approach did you take and, and where do you find, uh, you know, the, the benefits and the difficulties? Okay. About to be an independent consultant, my advice for you is become a senior first. So have more experience in companies, go to several places, and then if you decide to run your company, go for it. The good points of become uh, uh, independent consultant is it's hard to become boring because you're gonna have several clients with several challenges. So you are able to apply several methodologies, you're able to to learn in multiple sites instead of a single place. But it is also a, a not good point because you're gonna have several clients. You need to measure your skill to do missing some delivery. You don't forget something that you need to do. You don't. Uh, you don't miss some review, and you don't lose any important meeting because you need to to synchronize the meetings of several companies because you need to be there on the right moment at the right time. So organization is the key. And be an employee is amazing because we don't need to find clients. So that is somebody else's job to find clients. And we will be fine with just one culture that is that organization culture. So don't need to learn and apply uh, different client cultures because you're going to have just one. Um, you are able to, it's more comfortable somehow because you need to find clients, you need to sell yourself more often like you do as independent consultant. Uh, however, it might become boring faster because, okay, it has unique challenge. Sometimes there's, there's anything else to do it. Um, you might be vulnerable because with independent consultants, you have multiple clients. So if something goes wrong, I mean, for example, you have five, five clients. If something goes wrong with one client, you, you should have five, four. But when you talk about be an employee, if something goes wrong with that company, you need to find another one. So it might take time to to do the process, the hiring process. So it might not good for your pocket mm. on that perspective. So yeah. you have more comfortable. And on the hand, another one is okay. If something goes wrong with that company, you're in trouble. Yeah, so there's 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 benefits and drawbacks on on both sides, I guess. But again, I don't think people have to choose it. It's uh, like right away. It it I guess see what works for you at the at this time of your of your life of your career, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Both 
are amazing. Uh, right now, I enjoy more being independent consultants, especially because of freedom. Uh, I start to learn more about the marketing side, how to be more stable, uh, to learn more about sales speech and things like that. So I'm enjoying more because I'm achieve achieving more skills. I'm learning more skills, especially because sometimes the stakeholder has no idea about the technical perspective and you need to discuss technical perspective with someone who has no idea about this technical perspective. So it's amazing to learn how to uh, discuss and increase the reliability of yourself outside your comfort zone. Because, okay, I'm software engineer. I feel more comfortable talking about technical things with technical people. But right now, no, I need to discuss with executive level, technical perspective with someone who has no idea about us. Mm. Yeah, that's uh, true. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that. I think that's um uh, that's really useful. And and again, some some people, I guess, who already are in this industry and and might might be having that same dilemma. It's it's one of those things that you probably yeah decide. Uh, you can decide depending on your on your current situation. Um. Well, you you do contribute. We said that already. You contribute to a lot of um, uh, open source um, projects in 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 our Java ecosystem, Java Jakarta e micro profile. So, uh, other than are there any other projects you currently contribute to? Is there any any single project that you are most excited um, to to work on right now at the moment? Okay, that's a good question, right? I mean, uh, I usually I do a lot of Jakarta, as I said, so. Jakarta validation, Jakarta NoSQL, Jakarta data, uh, Jakarta precision sometimes, CDI. Uh, I enjoy a lot the database side. So I contributed to some Eclipse Store right now, database, Hopper DB database, MongDB, Cassandra, and so on, and the L4J. Uh, I enjoy because my focus is in the product texture, especially on the persistence layer. So it's helped me to learn. It's helped me to increase my my branding, if it's like that. And the most exciting one is to Jakarta data because it will be revolutionary the way that we're doing persistence in Jakarta. And I'm super glad to become part of the tech lead of this team. So Jakarta, you'll be super easier to handle with persistence on that perspective. So super domain centric. With async interface, you're able to do a lot of things, a lot of magic, and I'm happy with that. So it's my newborn baby mm -hmm. coming, hopefully in January. Great. No, this is great to hear. This is what we need uh, as well. Yeah, just make it more accessible, more exciting, and yeah, just just to grow it really, because that's that's also where where my heart is. Just just growing that community and and making sure it's it's thriving and. And it has, um, yeah, people joining and contributing as well. And and on on that note, also, what advice would you give to other software engineers, whatever they, um, you know, the the skill level is? It doesn't really matter. But if they're interested in making some meaningful contributions to open source community, where where do you start? Okay, that's a good question. Where to start? So my advice to start is. Choose one that we enjoy a lot. So, okay, understand, again, understand the long term of investment. You need time to invest yourself on this kind of thing. Second, understand that once you choose, introduce yourself, read the documentation, watch. The biggest, the biggest mistake that I saw about it was, okay, it's my first day in this open source project and it starts to promote new features if you don't understand the context of this project. That usually is the biggest mistake. So read the documentation, introduce yourself, and do what nobody else wants to do. That means fixing documentation, increase documentation, enhance documentation, and of course, do the same with tests. So increase tests, enhance tests, make more readable these tests. And then go to the core, suggest some features, something like that. 
Another good point that you can do is also uh, you can check, um, for example, um, up, upgrade of, of the language. For example, right now we are running in Java 21. So there, there are features in Java 21 that you can decrease the code that you're doing. For example, if you are doing for each, you might change it with a string. Uh, if you do a lot of if else, you might uh, remove that and replace with predicates and things like that. So you can enhance the the code that we do have with the the newest Java version as well. Yeah, yeah, and I think again, it. Um, I think people might might assume there's. Um... It takes a lot of time or a lot of effort to contribute, but again, I don't think it has to, right? It's even little contributions, like you said before, little steps, just do a bit every day. That that helps and, and that that makes it relevant, right? You don't have to spend huge amounts of time on, on that yes. if you don't have it. If you do 10 minutes every single day mm. after one year, you're going to see a huge difference that you, you can do. Yeah, and it's and it's it's again it's growing your your profile as a professional and growing your CV, um, as 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 we say it, and and just uh, something that you can then show uh, next time you you need to sell your brand and and show yourself you can you can show okay I've contributed to this project for number of years or for number of months and here's the proof like there's there's proof there on GitHub you can actually show uh, everything. Um, there's no denying it's not just words that you put on, you know, on your CV. It's actually a pr proper proof. So I think it's very relevant, and and I do encourage everyone, uh, if they can, uh, contribute to whatever uh, project you open source project you are interested in. I think it's worth it on both sides. Yes, yes, it's a exciting because you can do uh, presentation, you can do discussions, you can. I will discuss, right? So software engineering goes beyond code. So you can help with code, documentation, doing presentation, reporting some bugs, uh, writing some articles, perhaps translate to another language. So it will help you a lot, especially to understand the universe that is software engineering. Mm. And, uh, you know, maybe maybe a bigger jump now uh, in regards to like um, experience or recognition, but you, you are a Java champion. And uh, yeah, how how does one become a Java champion? Is there a, a way? How did that happen? How does that happen? <laughs> oh, okay, that's a good question. Uh, the first point is uh, somebody else to take you as a Java champion. So you, you do often contributions to the open source and the Java community and somebody, okay, we're doing a lot of things. Again, the attitude to do a single thing every single day. So people notice you and they say, okay, our time is doing a lot of things, coolest things. So maybe he's a good candidate to become a Java champion. So Java champion is uh, a person who become super re relevant to the Java community. And they need to, to answer three questions. And just Java champion, I is able to, to nominate Java champions and just Java champions able to vote to Java champions. So it's basically Java to Java community to community process step. So you need to answer if you are a good technical person, then reply with several reference about your contributions. If you are leading the community or drive the community, so you, you need to reply that question with your presentations, articles, and things like that. Your, if you organize some conference and things like that. And finally, uh, your impact in the software industry. So, okay, you are doing that in your company, your organization, or the open source world. Yeah, there's there's clear history of uh, activity there. So again, a lot of the things that we talked about already, um, they do get noticed, right? And there's 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 all the things, but I think Java Champion is is this one sort of a title which I I I find um, 
sort of really relevant because like you said it's it's uh it's given by uh other java champions to other java champions they can nominate you and you do have to sort of there there's a clear proof why you receive this um this title and and that sort of i think motivates right it motivates to do further java work uh it's not something that you get and then you you, you you're done it's actually something I think that drives people that become Java champions. This this drives you a little bit more. Yeah. You yes. Know, doing, um, doing it's awesome work. to be a Java champion, and I mean, be recognized for your contributions and from another guys and people, girls who did a lot of things to the Java world as well. So it's amazing, and you start doing a single step every single day, single day. So share what you know, contribute, be involved with the open source, doing what you want to do. Uh, it's important to say no <laughs> sometimes. So no to, to some open source project because you have, you have a different focus. Remember that's impossible to learn everything around computer science, software engineering as a person. That's why we live in society, right? So we have different experts and we are working together and choose your expertise area and invest time on that. And especially remember long-term investment. Mm. Yeah. Long-term investment, bigger picture. Yeah. That's, that's the theme. That's the theme uh, for this episode, I think. <laughs> uh, so, so what's next for you, Otavio? What plans have you got for the next few weeks or months? Um, do you have any, any new projects, any new events, anything or 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 anything that you've been working on for a long time and still can Ah, on? yes. Um my three next steps, right? Uh, the first the first one is of course Yakata data specification where we are the milestone one, we are releasing the milestone two. We are working super hard with the whole community to release this version in Jakarta E11 with this evolutionary way you handle with assistance. Um, the second one is a book around the JVM internals. Hopefully, to be ready for review in delivery in March. And the third one is a book around Java and NoSQL database, where we're exploring several NoSQL database such as MongoDB, Cassandra, Couchbase. Uh, where I will explain some tips, advice, backups, and modeling to enable enable more the polyglot persistence around software architecture. Oh, that's that's great! I didn't know about the book. So there you go. You've, we've got uh, two ideas for another two episodes. Then in the <laughs> in next next <laughs> year, you can talk about your books then, because that's also something I I really like uh, to talk about and and again just share. Um, especially that I know how much work goes into those. So you're busy. You're busy. Keep yourself busy. Yeah, my secret. My secret is a single move every single day. So, of course, um, the book has several chapters, but of course, I did not do it the whole chapters in the single day. So, I I take thirty minutes every single day, and after six months. I was able to say, "Hey, we are releasing a new book because of that." Yeah, and that, that and that sounds doable, and it sounds not not overwhelming when you. Yes, when it's not overwhelming. Well. Yeah, great. Thank you very much, Otavio. I think, uh, yeah, I think we've covered a lot of really interesting, really important, and uh, really useful uh, stuff for for anyone you know who wants to. Again, either start the career or maybe take it uh, up a notch or maybe just like um, they may be stuck and, and don't know which way to go. I think that would be really useful. So I can't wait to, to share it with our listeners. And yeah, and we will definitely uh, have you here again. There's so many things we can talk about and uh, I already have quite a few ideas. But good luck with your books. Um, you know, there's still there's still some time to, to finish them. So good luck, good luck with that because I know it's a lot of work. And uh, yeah, and um, again, I'm looking forward to you know working with you on Jakarta EE uh, and seeing your contributions to um, all of the other projects. So thank you, thank you again for for being here and for sharing your wisdom. Oh, that's my pleasure. Thank you, Dominica. Thank you, Payara. Thank you, everybody, to listen to the end and hopefully see you around 
with new books coming out and new specification coming out. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.